What is up guys? I uh, just wanted to make a video about exam MFE, which is what it used to be called, and which is now called exam IFM. So it used to be called Models for Financial Economics, and now it's called IFM. Let's see. Investing in Financial Markets, I think. I think that's right, investing in financial markets. So I actually think it's probably a little more relevant now than what it used to be. I think it probably ties in more to the kind of financial side of what an actuary does. But when I took this exam, I took the very last sitting of MFE. So I took models for financial economics. And essentially what this was composed of was essentially everything regarding the stock market. So long calls, right? Uh, the option to buy a stock at a specified price called uh, the strike price, right? Um, so calls, puts, um, different kinds of uh, option combinations. So there's weird things like the asymmetric butterfly spread. Um, and in my opinion, something I wanna mention about that um, because I think this is still an IFM. I recommend pictures. You know I love pictures. Um, make sure that you just, in my opinion, have the pictures in mind. They will help you understand kind of when you're making a profit, um, how the premiums tie in there, um, the strike price, uh, all of that. Um, and then mainly it was about pricing those things. And I made one video on this, which was pricing the uh, call option. And I used to go through all of these option pricing problems using that definition that I went over there. It has to do with the expected value. Um, and if you haven't watched that video, I recommend watching it. It's pretty long, but try to understand what's going on. There's quite a bit of probability involved as well, which makes it, in my opinion, more interesting. Um, pretty amazing formula, uh, to be honest. Um, so I think there's some other things that were introduced after I took the exam, right? It became IFM, which I think they introduced things from like the VEE on, uh, financial, um, economics. Um, so things like the weighted average cost of capital, um, some other concepts from finance that are actually, I think are more relevant to what you might be doing as an actuary. Again, this depends on where you're placed. Okay, the, the kind of traditional roles are reserving and pricing, but I remember when I worked at Liberty Mutual, there were individuals who worked in the finance department that were actuaries. And actually where I am now, same story. Um, actually, our old CFO uh, was an actuary. So the chief financial officer. So definitely important stuff, but it may not be relevant for the role that you're working in immediately. Nonetheless, you gotta get through it. Um, what did I use to study? I initially bought ASM. Now my experience with ASM manuals is that, I believe his name is, I don't wanna mess up his name, Abraham Wise House, maybe. Super intelligent guy, brilliant. I believe he has a PhD and he's an FSA. Um, I, my experience is that his manuals are quite difficult, which is good. You want the study material to be more difficult than the actual exam. Am I right or am I right? I mean, that's what you want. You want to be over prepared. So I started to use ASM. Um, and then actually I had to take a little bit of a hiatus because Liberty Mutual required um, you to take some downtime when you first get hired. They want to make sure you can do the job. And then, then once you realize that you can do the job, then they allow you to study again. And so I had to take a little bit of a break. And once I started, once I was able to start studying again, because the company you work for pays for your study materials. Um, ASM I bought on my own, but then when I started working for Liberty Mutual, I bought TIA. I thought TIA was really good for MFE. Presumably it's good for IFM as well, I'm not really sure. But um, um, I think uh, TIA does a good job there. Now, one distinguishment probably from MFE versus IFM is that uh, MFE was highly computational. Um, I thought the exam was hard because of that. A lot of trickery, tons of trickery. I mean, honestly, on that exam, 
I was pissed because that was the situation where you had to wait eight weeks, which I think you still do. You have to wait eight weeks to, just, to determine whether you passed or not. And um, <laughs> I was hoping, I was like, please just let me be prepared enough that, that when I'm done, I know for sure that I passed or I failed. I mean, just, I know for sure. Of course I get done, have this feeling of ambiguity of no idea. Did I pass? Did I fail? Got to wait it out. Honestly, one day I think I failed one day. You're like, oh, I'm good. Ultimately I passed with a seven. Thank goodness. But what I remember about that test is that I got really hung up on the first couple questions. Don't do this. Do not do this. It's very easy to fall into this trap. I know a lot of us are perfectionists. We want to get everything right. We want to score a 10 on every exam. We want to know everything, right? 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 Yep. So, try not to get hung up on that. Man, it's so easy to do that. But the first couple of questions, it's one of those situations where you think, you swear, there's not even enough, uh, enough information to actually solve the problem that they give you. And it would just drive me crazy. This is during the exam. So, I ended up... Uh, finally getting uh, kind of having to come back to the first couple questions and of course you don't want to start off that way either right I mean the last thing you want is for the first couple questions to be hard as hell so anyways I get past the first couple questions I'm like I got to come back to these I spent like 10 minutes on the first problem not not smart kind of breeze through the rest of the exam still tricky questions conceptual tricky questions uh, multi like the kind of uh, just like not even mathematical some of those were the trickiest ones as well Finally come back, figure it out. It's like, damn, waste so much time on that. Um, but for MFE, it was highly computational, a lot of trickery, uh, a lot of formulas to remember. I think IFM might be a little more conceptual um, in terms of um, understanding, you know, vocabulary, um, high level details, and not as much computation. Um, practicality kind of already alluded to this a little bit. Um, in terms of entry level roles, I think, well, again, it depends on where you land a job, but um, these are not kind of traditional things that you're going to be using, you know, calls and puts, uh, pricing them, of course, is not something you're probably going to be doing on the job. Um, I did find the material pretty interesting. Once you get, once you get kind of the hang of it, I didn't have any background in that, so it was a little bit tricky for me, but once you get kind of the feel of it, I, and I, again, this is why foundations, in my opinion, are very important. Um, if you look at how the, say the, how you're able to price an option, if you look at the details of that, uh, I think it makes a lot of sense. It's using a lot of probability theory, and I think it helps you understand why it works, and I think that's valuable. So I recommend, I mean, you don't have to watch my video, but I did make a video on it. Otherwise, I believe ASM actually, one thing I like about ASM is that um, because Abraham, doctor, I want to call him, you know, he does a PhD, but I can't pronounce his last name. I think it's Wise House. Because he has a PhD, I believe in math or maybe statistics, he goes into a lot of the details. So I salute him for that. Um, he goes into a lot of the mathematical details, derivations, where these things come from, which I like. In my opinion, I think that's great. I think it's important to be able to, to re-derive those yourself. I think it's valuable. Of course, we don't have all the time in the world, but I'm telling you, it'll give you a better understanding. Um, there's, of course, Aztec as well, which I didn't use. Uh, but I do want to point out, of course, this, ADAPT. Um, I think ADAPT is really valuable for the first three exams, P, FM, and IFM. A colleague I work with, Joseph Lee, I don't think he watches my videos. I don't even think he knows. But he said, first three exams, you can adapt your way through. Pretty much true. I mean, you got to learn the foundations. Um, there's still quite a bit of material to learn, a ton of material to learn, but ADAPT is a great way to go because, of course, it increases difficulty, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I think that just kind of repetition will allow you to get through the exam. Once you get to an exam like MAS1, no. They're going to throw such weird tricks that you never thought of at you. <laughs> oh, but... Anyways, this is more or less what I wanted to say uh, about uh, exam MFE slash IFM. Um, let me know in the comments uh, below what you think of it, uh, whether you thought it was hard, whether you took it, whether you're going to take it, um, and good luck to all you exam takers. This stuff's hard. I mean, math is hard. These actual exams are hard as hell. So uh, keep studying, keep grinding away, and uh, best of luck to you.
Thanks for tuning in.